Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is Volume of Surface Area. This is my NXL IGCC exam questions per topic series. It's the second time I've done these types of series. If you've not seen series one, check it out. Okay, so we have got the volume of this is a cuboid, and a cuboid is a type of prism. And any prism, we can work out the cross sectional area and then multiply it through by the third dimension, which is usually height, but it just depends on which way that the shape is orientated. So, uh, the cross-sectional area here uh, could have been any one of the, the faces for a cuboid, uh, but we're going to pick this one, the base, uh, because that base, when pushed through the third dimension, uh, will be the same all the way through, which is what makes it a prism. So when I multiply it through this dimension, it just stays exactly the same uh, to make it a prism. Okay, so the volume, uh, we know, is the cross-sectional area which is, in this case, the base times by the width, or the length times by the width. Uh, and then we multiply it by that third dimension, which in this case is the height, which is x. So we get 806 is equal to, uh, and 15 times 8 is uh, 120 plus 4, so it's 124, uh, and then times by x. Uh, okay, so in order to find x, we just need to divide both sides by 124. Uh, so x is equal to, um, let's just use a calculator for this, uh, 806 divided by 124, and we get a nice number of 6.5. So we know, again, another little tip is that they don't ask us to round it to a particular value, it just says work out x. So if you get an answer like 18.13678543321, then you know you've probably made a mistake. But 6.5 is a lovely number, uh, nice and round, so we're good. Okay, next question, and we have a cylinder, which is also a type of prism, um, and uh, it has a radius and it has a height. Uh, it says the mass of the cylinder uh, is given, the density of the uh, aluminium is given, uh, calculate the height. So the first thing I'm going to check is the units, because I don't want to make a mistake on this. So the radius is in centimetres, the height is in centimetres, the mass is in kilograms, and the density is in kilograms per centimetres cubed. So I don't need to change any of the units, they're all centimetres or kilograms, so that's good. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just remind myself of the triangle which links mass, volume and density. I always remember it just mass goes on top, and it doesn't really matter where the other two go after that. Um, okay, so now let's work out the volume of this, uh, of this cylinder. So it has a cross-sectional area uh, of a circle, uh, because this circle down here... Uh, goes all the way um, through the shape once you lift it up through the third dimension and it stays uniform all the way through. Uh, so that's the cross-sectional area. And the area of a circle is pi times by r, which in this case is 10, and then squared. And then to find the volume, we need to multiply it by that third dimension, which is the height, h. Lovely. Okay. Um... So now we need to find the height. Um, okay, so we need to find the volume another way, because we're not going to be able to solve this equation to find the height, because we don't know the volume just yet. So we need to find the volume another way, and that is by using the formula, volume is equal to mass divided by density. So in this triangle here, we're looking for volume, so we cover it. So that's m over d, so that's mass divided by density. So the mass is 5.4 and the density is 0 0.0027. Okay, um, can I do that in my head? I think I can't, um, but I suspect it's going to be about 200, that's my guess. Uh, come on, is it gonna be right? Ah, shabby, 2000, missed out on this. Okay, no worries. That's what calculators are for. 2,000. Okay, so that means the volume is 2,000. So we can put that into our equation now. Like so. We know 10 squared is 100. Uh, we can divide both sides by 100 nice and neatly. So that leaves me 20 is equal to pi times by h. So finally, we can divide both sides by pi. To get 20 over pi is equal to h. Uh, and that's where we're going to need to use the calculator again. Um, again, this question says give it to one decimal place, so I know that my answer is going to be um, a bit 
Pi Yi, uh, which is 6.3 or 6.4. In fact, I'll write it here approximately 6.366, which rounded is 6.4. Beautiful. Okay, next one. Um, we've got John T, he's got a storage container. Um, I'll let you read all this. Um, and basically we've got to figure out whether or not he could have afforded the um, uh, the paint before the increase. Um, so the cost of each tin of paint increased by 10%. Uh, so let's first off, it's a prism, let's work out the, um, the, the, the surface area that's needed uh, to cover all sides. So um, it says that they're going to paint the... Um, um, four sides and the top. Uh, so let's first off work out the um, uh, the front side. Let's call it A. So that will be three times two point five, which is seven point five. Um, and then let's look at the um, the long side. Uh, let's call that side B. Um, so that will be uh, three times by uh, twelve which is 36. Now there's another A over this side and there's another B at the back as well so we're going to have to double each of these um, so that will give me 15 and 72. Um, now there is also one other side which is the top um, so the top is the same as the base so it's 2.5 times by 12 so we'll do 2.5 times by 12, um, which is 30. And we don't have to double that one because we're not doing the base, we're just doing the top. So these are all, that's the surface area then of the shape, uh, which is going to be 102, 117. And that's meters squared. Okay, so that's the surface area. Um, so it says each tin of paint covers 15 meters squared. So we need to figure out how many tins we need. So the number of tins will be the amount of area we need to cover divided by how much tin, uh, how much one tin covers. Um, so that is going to be just shy of eight, I believe. Um, so it's going to be 7.8, which means we are going to need uh, eight tins. Uh, because of course you can't just buy an eighth or sorry eight tenths of a tin you have to buy tins in whole um, quantities <clears throat> okay so now um, now we need to figure out how much the the tins were um, uh, after the after the increase we know how much they were they were this so we need to figure out how much they were before the increase so how much they were before the increase we'll call x and then they were increased by 10%. The 10% increase is the same as multiplying by 1.1. 1 .1. Um, so times by 1.1. And then this gives us um, the new price after the increase, which is this. So if I want to find the original price, I need to divide by the multiplier, which, like we said before, was 1.1. 1 .1. So we divide by 1.1. And we get the old price was 24.5. Uh, uh, so the cost uh, before the increase um, would have been uh, the fact that we need eight tins and they cost 24.5 each. Um, so if we take that 24.5 and multiply it by eight, then we get 196 pounds. Um, and then just to show it's correct, obviously 196 is less than 200. So that is shows that he was correct. And he should have got it in the sale. Lucky. Okay, tricky question alert. Uh, we've got a strange compound L-shaped prism. And it says the rectangular base of the prism is shown in the diagram as horizontal. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. The container is completely filled with water. Okay, that's relatively interesting. Um, and then Tua is going to use a pump to empty the water from the container so that the volume of the water in the container decreases at a constant rate. The pump starts entering the water from the container at 
10.30. And at 12 o'clock, the water in the container has dropped down by 20 centimetres, which is really interesting and a bit sneaky because that means that the, this part of the uh, container has been uh, drained. It's just this top part of the L. Okay, so because if it's dropped down to 20, then it's this part um, that has come off. Okay, so now the new water level is exactly across here. So the part that I've coloured in blue is the part which has um, uh, which has been drained off. Um, okay, so that part's gone. So how much has gone? Well, we can work that out because we can work out this blue bit uh, by using uh, the volume of that blue bit is the um, is the base, which is 125 multiplied by 30, multiplied by the height, which is 20. Um, perfect. Okay, so that's going to give us the volume of the bit which has already been drained away, because like it says in the question, it says that it's dropped by 20 centimeters. So that's the part. That's all the water that's gone. Um, which is this, so that's how much is gone. Okay. Um, so now, we need to work out the time in which the water has been completely uh, drained. Okay, so let's shade in um, how much water is left. So how much water is left, I'll shade in green, uh, which is gonna be all of this stuff in this cuboid below okay uh, yeah okay so all that stuff is left to be uh, drained so let's work out how much is left is needed to be drained well that's base is 85 multiplied by 125 multiplied by 40 okay so um, we can do uh, 85 uh, multiplied by 125 multiplied by 40 and this is how much which is left to go okay um, so we said before that we've used this amount in and how long has it taken for that that's a, an hour and a half um, so if I divide that by 1.5 then that tells me how much it will do in an hour um, so that will be uh, 50,000 so it does 50,000 every hour okay perfect so that's how quickly it drains 50,000 per hour so if we want to work out how many hours are left to drain the rest of this then we need to divide this by 50,000 and that will tell me how many hours it will take to drain what's left over so if I do this here, uh, and I divide this by 50,000, um, I get 8.5 hours. Okay, so at the moment we are at 12 o'clock uh, midday, and we need another 8.5 hours. So therefore the time will be um, 8 o'clock in the evening or 8.30 sorry because you have to add eight, eight and a half hours onto midday um, so just on the 24 hour clock that is that's that's 20.30 perfect okay on to what I think is the final question uh, and we have a cuboid uh, with the given dimensions and we have a volume of a um, we're told the volume okay great so straight away I know I can find x because if I have the volume uh, and I know that the um, a volume of a cuboid is the uh, cross-sectional area, which we can call the base, which is 12 times 5, multiplied by the third dimension. In this case, we can call that the height x. Um, and we know that that's equal to uh, 270. Um, so this is 60. x is equal to 270, which means that x is equal to... Uh, 270 over 60, which I should do in my head, um, 
why can't I do this in my head? I should be able to do this. I'm going like 15. 15? That's well off. Holy moly. 4.5. Forget about that. That didn't happen. So X is 4.5. Um, lovely. And if we go then over to the next part of information, it says the radius of the cylinder is X and the height of the cylinder is 2X. Work out the volume of the cylinder. No problem. So the volume of a cylinder, again, is the cross-sectional area, which in this case is a circle, and that did not work out very well. Um, so this is the cross-sectional area, the circle here, uh, which is pi times by um, r squared, or in this case x squared, and then multiplied by the height, which is 2x. So the volume is 2 pi x cubed, will we simplify, and we know what x is. It's 4.5. Perfect. So, just go to our calculator for this because we're using pi. Uh, so we can't do it in our head. Not that I want to after that poor performance earlier. And we just type it in and we get 572.5. So 572.5, which is approximately to the nearest whole number 57 and that will be centimetres cubed. Perfect. Oh, look at this. Cheeky little question down the bottom. Didn't see that one. Change one metres cubed to centimetres cubed. Okay, so if I have one metre, um, then I think um, we all know that, that is 100 centimetres. Okay, so a metre is 100 centimetres. Um, if I have one meter squared, however, because this, and then what we did there was we multiplied by 100. Because to go from meters to cent centimeters, there were more centimeters in a meter. So you have to multiply in order to uh, convert. And if we go from meters squared, the trick is that we have to multiply by the scale factor 100, but, the, but then square the scale factor. So this, in fact, will give us 10,000 centimeters squared. So what we want is one meter cubed. So in order to do that, we need to multiply by, the scale factor is 100, but we have to cube it, so we're looking at the third dimension. Um, and that is gonna give us um, six zeros, um, which is a million. Perfect. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.